What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we are talking about high protein diets and the incidence of kidney disease. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. Now one of the tropes I have heard for 25 years is high protein diets, they build muscle, they do, but they're bad for your kidneys, they're bad for your kidneys. This idea was developed decades ago looking at, well, Protein is made up of amino acids. Amino acids have an ammonia component to them, which must be eliminated through conversion to urea, and urea is eliminated through the kidney, and so this must create stress on the kidneys, and therefore, if people have kidney disease, it's recommended that they reduce their protein intake, and perhaps limiting protein intake may help prevent kidney disease. This kind of developed and became a truth, and there was some correlational data to support it as well. But more recently, there was a meta-analysis of human randomized control trials that actually found that high-protein diets did not lead to more kidney disease. And some people said, well, those human randomized control trials, they're short, how long does it take CKD to develop? Well. Recently, a new meta-analysis of prospective cohort studies came out looking at the incidence of CKD and dietary protein intake, and then further segmented it into animal protein intake and plant protein intake. And so the difference between this meta-analysis and the prospective cohort data was they excluded studies that reported protein intake and its effect on progression of kidney disease. So this was looking at protein intake on healthy kidneys and the incidence of kidney disease. They also excluded if they didn't adjust for age, they excluded retrospective studies, and they excluded studies that did not report actual outcome data. So the incidence of actual kidney disease, not some surrogate marker. So out of these studies, it came to about a total of 150,000 participants in total. Most of the studies were low risk of bias and high quality of evidence. And they also conducted what's called sensitivity analysis where they remove each individual study to see if it affects the outcomes of these studies, which kind of protects against like one study having way more influence than it should. And so it, it passed all these inclusion criteria as well as the sensitivity analysis. And the average length of these studies, it was anywhere from like six years to 23 years. Most of them were in that like 10 to 15 year range. And so looking at, all right, of people who develop kidney disease, were they more likely to have higher protein intakes, lower protein intakes, moderate intakes? What they found was higher total protein reduced the relative risk of kidney disease incidence by 16%. That even held true for animal protein, which reduced the risk of kidney disease incidence by 14%. Now to be fair, so a few of these cohorts, the protein intake was weighted heavily towards fish. And so that may have affected it, but it tended to hold true across all these different studies. And plant protein was associated with a 20% relative risk reduction in the incidence of kidney disease. Now. What I had trouble finding in this study was what do they consider high protein? What do they consider low protein? Where's the, where's the center line breakpoint? So I went to some of the studies they cited and basically, you know, some studies defined like low protein as like less than 13% of total energy and high protein was over 16% total energy. Uh, others looked at low protein being under, you know, 0.8 grams per kilogram, whereas high protein was above 1.3 grams per kilogram. So there was some heterogeneity in terms of what they defined as lower high protein, but pretty consistently higher protein intakes were associated with a lower risk of kidney disease incidence, which fits with the previous meta-analysis of human randomized control trials demonstrating that high protein intakes do not harm healthy kidneys. And that has been a pretty consistent result in these human randomized control trials, as well as these really well done prospective cohort studies. When we say a prospective cohort study, we also have to realize that reverse causality can also be the case. So in this case, reverse causality could be people with healthier kidneys just tend to eat higher protein, but that would indicate that there's some kind of link between the kidney and the brain 
that would cause people to select higher protein foods if they had better kidney function. I'm not aware of any such link. I think it's less likely. And so I think reverse causality is somewhat unlikely in this case. Is it possible that protein doesn't really have a protective effect? I mean, we did review a study previously that showed that higher protein intake led to healthier aging in older people, and that was true whether it was animal or plant protein, although plant protein had a much more powerful effect than animal protein on healthy aging. And so, you know, could these people just be healthier overall? And that helped. Absolutely, absolutely it could. People who have higher protein intake could be more active, all that kind of stuff. But I think what it does show is certainly high protein does not appear to be detrimental. Whether or not it's protective may remain to be seen. Now, they have not tested really high protein intake, such as like, you know, three grams per kilogram. So are those safe? It's hard to tell. There was a one year randomized control trial with I think four grams per kilogram protein intake, and they saw no real negative health effects. But again, that's just one year. So that sort of stuff remains to be seen. We're gonna need more data. But as of now, at least moderately high protein intakes do not appear to be detrimental to kidney function or the incidence of kidney disease. Guys, again, if you like how we break down these studies, make sure you check out our research review reps. If you're somebody who has difficulty getting in enough protein, high quality whole food sources of protein are always what we, what we recommend first. But I also sell whey protein isolate through my nutrition supplement company, Outwork Nutrition. Very high quality, very low carbohydrate, very low fat, very tasty, very, very easy to digest, almost virtually no lactose. Um, most people who have GI issues find they tolerate this well. So if you're interested in that, you can click the link in the description. Again, not magic, but just a cost-effective, tasty, high quality protein that's easy to take in and digest. All right, guys, hope you liked the video and I'll catch you next week.